Mick, thanks so much for joining me on Journal Club. Thanks, mate. Thanks for asking me. I've, I've been waiting for this invitation a long time, so I appreciate the offer. Now, you've picked a, um, a study on ACL rehabilitation. Surprise, surprise. Yep. Um, yeah, but it's, it's an interesting one that looks at strength training and, and how people can progress through rehab. Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's one that I've read. It's been around for a couple of years. It's called Progressive Strength Training Restores Quad and Hamstring Muscle Strength uh, within seven months after ACL reconstruction in amateur football players, it's from a group, uh, research group headed by Wouter Welling uh, from the Netherlands. Um, they've done a large body of work and um, I hope I am doing them a little bit of justice with my little pod, uh, all our podcast and a bit of a summary of it today, mate. So yeah, it, it's an important one and I think it really highlights how important strength training is and how a progressive plan over a number of weeks and months yields some pretty fantastic results. So tell us about the study. What did they look at? So they basically looked at quadricep strengthening and hamstring strengthening in ACL reconstructed athletes. And, and the plan itself, um, they basically broke down a rehab plan over uh, 10 months into four distinct phases. So they basically, as we all know as physios, we do our kind of you know, pain reduction, swelling management, gait retraining, all the bread and butter stuff as physios. We, they did that in the first two to four weeks. No, no, no magic tricks there. They then moved into the second phase where they, they basically loaded up, um, but low weights, high reps till about the four month mark just to get the people introduced to a bit of load tolerance. And then from the, the next phase, so phase three, they really sharpened up the load. And this is where they kind of like where they really wanted to drill in and, and reproduce um, a strength program that matches the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines. And so over a three month window, they, they hit those heavier loads in, in those athletes. And then at the seven-month mark, they threw an extra curveball at them and went harder and heavier for those last three months through to the 10-month mark. And they followed them all the way at those um, four-month, seven-month and 10-month time points looking at their quad symmetry and hamstring sy symmetry. So really cool study. Yeah, that was the thing that I took away from the paper as well is that we've all seen plenty of rehabilitation protocols. Mm. But the, I think the point of difference with this one is how heavy and how intense yep. that last phase of the rehab really from four or five months on yep. to the end, yes. inverted commas, that, that was where they actually did, for a better expression, a bit more than what other protocols had, had, had put forward. Is, yep. is that your understanding and is that what you took away as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and even they, they had also previously had done some work in a similar vein prior to this study and, and they admittedly said we probably needed to go a bit heavier to get some better results. Um, and so, yeah, they, they basically took a review of their previous work, thought, well, let's match the loads consistent to what healthy individuals should be doing um, if they are looking to build strength and hypertrophy in, in muscles. So they you know, hit up the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines and followed what we all should be doing. And it, it yielded some really, really great results. Yeah, so they, uh, they looked at, I think it was four time measure, points of time measurement. But the ones I think that were most interesting is where they looked that uh, time measures at seven months yep. and also at 10 months. We should say, um, I, you might have already covered it, but that they compared it to a group of normals, yes. didn't they? Yes, yeah, so exactly. Yep. So the seven-month data was really interesting. Yeah, what did, you, what did you read out of that? So at the seven-month, the quad symmetry, and so when they say symmetry, we're looking at 90% limb symmetry as being you know, successful, so, so to speak. So they basically found that quad and hamstring symmetry at seven months was no different between the ACL group and the healthy control group. Um, so that that phase three program where they went heavy, so we're talking, we're not talking even super heavy, we're talking sets of eights, sets of twelves, you know, three or four sets, eights to twelves of commonly used exercises, squats, deadlifts, Bulgarian split squats, knee extensions, hamstring curls, all stuff that can and should be done. That gave them a fantastic result where there was no differences between the groups at seven months. So that, that was a big takeaway from me that, yeah, just simple programming and simple planning can, can give you those, those so, uh, scores. So does that mean rehab's finished at seven months if no. you do it properly? No, no, they, they did find they did fine. And, and those that want to go back to sport, we do know that strength symmetry is something that can be re restored with appropriate strength training, but it's that rate of force development and that power and that explosiveness that often isn't restored well. And, and that's what they try to manipulate in that last section um, that's why they went heavy. That's why they went sets of five, sorry, sets of threes, five sets of threes, really sharpening things up and getting them to lift heavy. And that's where they got that return of normal. And in fact, they actually, 
the quad symmetry was better than the healthy group and their peak torque to body weight ratio ended up a lot better at that 10 month follow up mark uh, compared to the healthy group so that was that was huge that was a huge finding yeah i think it's an interesting point i mean you and i've swapped notes in the past about how people when they're doing rehab like you're rehabbing from an injury but you're also trying to prevent the next one yes, as well 100%. and one of the clichés i use is let's get, let's get back here to play uh, let's get you back to play better than you were when you came in and got an injury. And I, and I think that this study shows that that can be achieved with the right program. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, you want to get them back better than ever before. Um, and importantly, I think what also highlights in this study is that there's, there's certainly a level of programming that is required to achieve these results. And as good as three sets of 10 programming is and three sets of 15 can be really effective in the early stages, it, it can't and should can't be done forever and nor should it should it be done forever if we're looking to get our athletes back to a higher level and back to a level that's actually what is considered to be normal you know we don't often have the luxury of in, in our clinical world we often don't have the luxury of pre-operative scores or you know a battery of you know uh, databases where we've actually got their previous known measures we're, we're actually meeting people for the first time we don't know where they've previously been so if we can get them back to what is considered to be normal and what their healthy peers can do, then we've done a, a fantastic job of their rehab. Yeah, agreed. The other time point that they measured was 10 months yeah. after the operation as well. And the data there was really quite surprising, yeah. so much so that they ended up being better than better. the controls. Yeah, yeah, they're off the charts better. Like, um, yeah, peak torque to body weight ratio was better than the healthy controls, and symmetry was restored in a vast majority of both the quads, the quads testing and the hamstring testing. It was about 70%. Um, and, and figures like that, haven't been seen in previous research like when we look at other areas and other research studies like numbers like that so 70 percent of the group are hitting um, 90 percent symmetry or more and really high values of peak torque to body weight ratio in quad strength other studies previously don't even come close to that um, we're talking as low as you know 30 40 50 percent um, you know achieving those results so this study here showed that last three month push can can get you over the line really importantly so if you're better than normal, in inverted commas, after 10 months of rehab, I suppose the question is, is can you overdo rehab? Can you do too much? Yep. Can you burn yourself out? What do you think? Yeah, there, there's truth to that. I think there is a bit of burnout that can creep in. And uh, over 10 months of continued planning, and, and looking at the study too, they, they basically built one block on top of the next, on top of the next, on top of the next. And, and getting through to 10 months um, without too much of a a break and, and plan breaks, you know, that, that can be, um, you know, probably detrimental in some athletes um, where they're hitting the return to sport time frame and are pretty mentally and physically cooked. Um, I honestly don't think that too much strength is a bad thing. Um, I, I think, you know, if you've got really high levels of strength on you, we have seen previous studies show that high strength relative to your body weight is actually protective um, from future soft tissue injuries is, um, and also too from a performance point of view I think it actually you know, can help you perform better if you've got strong muscles so yeah I, I, I see both coins of the arguments there that you, know, you can certainly be overcooked by the time you, you get to the 10 month mark and 12 month mark um, but I also like to be on the positive side of things so that extra strength will only be uh, a tremendous benefit and a, and a, a risk mitigator I think in, in, in the future um, so yeah, I, I like that and I don't mind seeing my athletes too strong. <laughs> so if, um, according to the study, you can get people back to normal strength yep. after seven months and even better mm. at ten months, why are we wait, waiting so long to return players back to play? Yeah, it's a, it's a good one and that's a, a debate that could rage on for years and years. Um, our, our current sort of knowing is that nine months seems to be a consistent trend in the literature about... Um, risk of re-injury there's probably you know at least two or three papers I can sort of think of that sort of flag this nine month mark as a safer time point to return to sport anything below that or earlier than that kind of carries a risk um, we can't forget that risk doesn't equal rate so just because you do come back at seven months doesn't mean it's going to happen it's probably a bit more riskier but that's where I think if you are good enough and you are strong enough at seven months what would I th what I would do to make me sleep well at night, and what what I think most clinicians should do to make them sleep well at night, and their athletes, if possible, too, is that getting to there at seven months allows you more training time. 
And I think that training time is extremely valuable and often understated and underperformed. Um, often if you're hitting these benchmarks, um, 90% limb symmetry is often the cutoff for strength and hop tests. And if you're hitting them and going back to the sport the next week, I think we're opening up a can of worms and a significant injury risk. But if you're getting there at seven months, but you're putting in the diary nine months return to sport mark, that's two months of valuable training that I think is going to be a huge asset. So that's where I think, yeah, look, I think a bit of sensibility here with our athletes I think is really called for. Um, and if you get to seven, if you get normal at seven months, awesome. Good for you. But let, let's probably be a bit more cautious and let's get more training into your legs before you actually play your first competitive game. That's what I took away from this study as yeah. well is, is that um, you can definitely get your strength back at seven to ten months post-injury and in, um, surgery, I should say. But that uh, confidence of movement, getting the training done, um, making sure that you're ready on the pitch or the field is the last 25% of yeah. you. And no, no disrespect to the study because they weren't going to look at it anyway. Yeah. But that's the missing piece for me yes. as a clinician yep. is that needs to be done. Yep. And I agree with you wholeheartedly that, yep. you know, that extra time needs to be done to completely rehab. Yeah, yeah I'd love... To, lo I'd love more studies like this that take that two-year follow-up now and, and look at re-injury rates and, and see what, what they get after they've achieved such great results. But, yeah, outside looking in, this is just one of those really good papers that sort of gives clinicians confidence to load up their athletes well and, and done in a sensible way. You can achieve fantastic results and get your athletes back to you know, their previous levels the best but also you know, comparable to what healthy, normal athletes can do as well and that's, that's a good thing. Mick Hughes, thank you very much for joining me on Journal Club. Thanks, Randall. It's been great talking to you, mate. Great.